In the past month, there's been more activity in my Wellsimple portfolio than ever before. And there's two reasons for this. The first one is I closed my house and also sold my condo. And that actually gave me a little bit of extra cash, more than I anticipated. Because the sale of the condo, we anticipated a certain amount and we ended up getting a little bit more than we actually asked for. So that allowed me to allocate more capital to my Wellsimple portfolio, as well as to the other portfolios that I own. The second reason as to why there's a bit more activity, more so selling activity, is because I changed my strategy from a dividend slash growth portfolio to just a pure growth stock portfolio. And I mentioned that in this video right up here. If you're interested in checking that out, go ahead, check it out afterwards. So with all the activity that's been going on in my portfolio, I want to document this journey as well as share with you guys my thoughts behind my investing strategy with my Wellsimple trade portfolio. So with all the activity that's been happening in my portfolio, I'll be going through all the trades that I made, giving you my reason why I bought or sold certain stocks, then show you a summary of all the activity and give you a sort of comparison basis on how the stock is doing now versus when I bought or sold it. As well as one of these stocks that I bought in my portfolio is a new stock, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. So let's jump right into my computer and just check out what's been happening in my portfolio. So we're here on my portfolio on the Wellsimple Trade desktop app. And for those of you who didn't want to get into Wellsimple Trade because they didn't have a desktop app, now they do. So if you're interested in signing up, I have a link down below which you can get $10 for free when you sign up today. But anyways, this is my Wellsimple Trade portfolio. I have about $32,000 in the portfolio today. I'm up about 7% over the last month. In all time, I'm up about 25%. Just note that I've been depositing money throughout these um, through the whole lifetime of this portfolio, which is why it's only up by 25%. If I had all the deposits, around twenty dollars to $24,000 of deposits, right at the beginning of the portfolio, it'd probably be up a little bit more. So for those of you guys who are new here, I'm just going to quickly scroll through my entire portfolio so you can see all the stocks that I hold, the number of shares that I have, as well as the all-time returns. For the desktop version here, one thing that I don't really like is the fact that you can't use this graph up top here. Um, to track your progress. It's just kind of a, a image that you can see, but you can't see exactly how much the portfolio is worth on certain days and how many um, dollars you deposit into your account. You can see this on the cell phone app though, which is great. Um, so I still appreciate the, the app that I use on my iPhone right now. Um, for those of you guys who are new again, this portfolio is a pure growth portfolio that I'm doing right now. I've sold a lot of my dividend stocks, which I'll talk about later on in this video and move that money over into these growth stocks that I have right now. Anyways, let's jump over to the spreadsheet that I have, which will document all the different trades that I've done in this past month. So here on the spreadsheet that I created for my December portfolio review, you can see here all the stocks that I bought and sold, how many shares I bought, the price per share, and the total amount. Positive amounts are stocks that I bought into, negative amounts are stocks that I sold. One thing that I want to highlight on this part of the spreadsheet is that I purchased Hive, which is my one new position in my portfolio as of this month. So I bought into Hive because they are essentially a cryptocurrency mining company and they're going to hugely benefit from the whole boom in Bitcoin that's going to come up. I think we're going to see a huge spike in cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Bitcoin just based on history. And usually the major cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Litecoin trade step in step with Bitcoin. There's a bit of disparity in their prices. However, at the end of the day, their trajectories tracked fairly nicely. So here on Hive's investor presentation, we can see the price of Bitcoin just year over year. And this is a logarithmic chart. So you can see in 2010, when Bitcoin first started, it was trading on a few cents. And then its first bull run, it actually popped up to around $20. So it went from around, I think, five cents all the way to $20, which is somewhere around a 400x increase. Um, and then from its all-time highs here to the next all-time highs, it went from around $20 all the way to $1,000, which is a 50x increase. And one thing to note is that this happened after a halving event. And what a halving event is, is when the amount of Bitcoin that's rewarded per block that's mined halves. So it went from 50 coins to 25 at this halving period, and then at this halving event went from 25 to 12.5, and so on. And every time there's a halving event, the subsequent years, we can see a huge run-up in Bitcoin's price. So it took about a year in 2013, where Bitcoin ran from its previous all-time highs of $20 to $1,000, and then it ran in the next halving event from the previous all-time highs of $1,000, 
to $20,000 or so. So there's a 50x increase from here to here, and then a 20x increase from here to here. And now we just crossed the halving event because we're at the end of 2020, and Bitcoin has finally reached its previous all-time highs and surpassed those fairly easily. So the previous all-time high is at $20,000. Today, Bitcoin's price is sitting at around $23,000. And it's actually crossed the $24,000 mark, um, if you see right here. So what this tells me is that Bitcoin is probably on the verge of breaking out to new all-time highs. I don't think we're gonna see a 20X or a 50X or a 400X, but you can see the pattern here. It's actually been going down in terms of the number of Xs that Bitcoin increases by. So I expect that this time we're probably going to see somewhere between a 5 to 10x in Bitcoin price from the previous all-time highs. What that represents for Bitcoin is that it'll probably end up being around $100,000 to about $200,000 if there's a 5 or 10x in price. So right now, this is why I'm buying into Hive as well as buying into Bitcoin because uh, I think that we could see a huge run up in Bitcoin as more and more investors are looking to place their money in Bitcoin instead of having their money in fiat currency or in stocks. So for me, I'm trying to get into Bitcoin now before the huge run up in Bitcoin price. And we can see that there's a correlation in Bitcoin price versus the search volume in Google Trends. So you can see here, Bitcoin's price actually spiked up around um, December 2017 and January 2018. So there's huge search volume as Bitcoin was surging in price. And we haven't yet seen that yet in 2020 and 2021. But we are seeing a bit of a trend to the upside in terms of search volume as Bitcoin's price has crossed its previous all-time highs. If you go into a 12-month zoom in, we can see that Bitcoin search volume has steadily been increasing and right now is actually at the 100% mark. In the past... Um, 90 days, we can see Bitcoin's search volume has just surged dramatically just because Bitcoin in this week crossed its all-time highs. So I think that people are taking out of Bitcoin now that it's past its previous all-time highs and actually buying into it. Um, another thing to note about Bitcoin is if we look at the price of Bitcoin here, and we should note the volume. So if we go from the charts, let's just adjust it to the previous boom. We can see the volume for Bitcoin at its previous all-time highs compared to the volume today was actually nothing. So during the huge spike in Bitcoin, this actually shows the volume based on the amount of dollars in Bitcoin that were traded, not the actual Bitcoins. But that volume um, in 2018 is nothing compared to the volume that's been happening in 2019, 2020. And right now there's a huge spike in Bitcoin volume as it's crossed its previous all-time highs um, right here on December 19th and December 20th. So my long-term price prediction for Bitcoin, if you're interested, was $570,000 per Bitcoin. And if you're interested in that, click on this video right up here in the corner um, and you can watch it afterwards. And I show you some math behind how I got there. Now enough about Hive, let's talk about the rest of my portfolio here. So we can see all the stocks that I bought and sold. Um, so I bought some Wahal Technologies, quite a bit of it actually, around $2,500 at an average cost basis of $7.06. I've been averaging into Wahal Technologies in the low sevens and high sixes because I think this is a consolidation period for Wahal Technologies. And recently, if we go to Wahal Technology stock, there's been quite a bit of activity in Wahal with a price run up from around $6.81 all the way to $7.65. Um, so I've been buying heavily into Wahal Technologies just like I said I would because I think this company is a future of healthcare. I'm more bullish on Wahal versus Doc, but I'm still buying into CloudMD. I bought at $2.15 as an average cost basis, around $400 of it. And Doc has also seen some price momentum in line with Wellhealth Technologies. Another stock I bought into was Absolute Software around the $13 mark. And this is because I saw a huge decline in Absolute Software's stock price from $18 all the way down to around $13 per share. And that's when I was averaging in. Today it trades around $15 per share, which I'm not really interested in averaging in at these prices. I bought some real matters, actually a fair amount at around $800 worth at an average cost basis of $19.59. In today's price, it's around $19.13. Real matters actually had a huge drop in its stock price from highs around $28 to lows around $17 or $18 per share. And I saw this as a great opportunity to average into my real matters position as I think this company is a solid tech company in Canada that's probably gonna to continue to go up in the long term. 
and I think that um, at an average price of $19.59, I'm fairly happy with that. I also bought one more share of Shopify, which was actually at a fairly significantly higher price than my initial purchase of the Shopify. I purchased around the $1,400 mark here, and my first stock was around the $1,200 mark. The reason why I purchased Shopify was because I did a bit more digging into the company and overall I'm bullish on the company long term and I figured I'd continue averaging in because I got some cash in my account from the sale of my condo. So I bought at a cost base of around $1400 and today Shopify has actually broken out past its previous all time highs. So if we go to shop stock, we can see that Shopify over the past year or so, its previous all time highs was around $1100. Um, and now it's broken up close to around $1,200 per share. And I think that the fact that we broke above this resistance line, which we can see was around $1,100, I think that Shopify is probably gonna go for a bit of a jog, maybe to $1,300 or $1,400. The next position that I bought into was the Chavo at an average cost basis of $67. And I was averaging up into this position because I did a bit more research into the company. I made a video that if you're interested in checking out, you can go right here. And I think that this company is going to be the face of the learning management systems going forwards. It's definitely one of the best platforms out there, especially with their social aspect where it allows employees as well as teachers to upload videos to the platform, making the whole ecosystem a lot more lively. I was a little bit dumb for buying in at these higher prices and they did announce a bot deal offering when I was buying. So this is a mistake that I made, but 2020 hindsight. The bot deal offering had their shares being offered at a cost basis of $62 per share, and I should have definitely waited for them to drop down to $62, which they ultimately did. Um, today, the price is sitting around $65, and for me, with the Chavo, I'm looking to continue averaging into this position because I do like the company for the long term. As long as it trades in the low $60 range, that's where I'm looking to buy. The last stock that I bought was H2 Innovations, and I bought at a cost basis of $2.15, and today it sits at around $2 per share. I'm not super disappointed about this, as this position is also another long-term growth stock that I'm planning to hold and buy. I think that this company is relatively small right now, and it's gonna capitalize on the water crisis that we have. And right now, the company is still relatively small in terms of market cap, and I think that as they continue to grow their revenues, as well as their business, I think this company going forward is going to profit off of the whole water crisis and their business is going to continue to boom. So even if I bought in at higher prices than what they are today, I think this company could definitely easily double or triple or quadruple in stock price in the next five to 10 years. Now moving on to the positions that I sold, I'll give you a quick update as to why I sold most of these stocks. A lot of these stocks were dividend stocks that I was looking to get out of as their prices rose on parity with what I bought them at. For REI or RioCan, I bought at an average price of around $14 to $15 per share, and I got quite lucky with this position as it ran up by about 30%, and I decided to sell it around here. I don't think the run-up was warranted just because the pandemic's still going on right now. Although there is a vaccine, I don't think we're going to get in, back into um, the norms of what was going on in 2019 in terms of retail as well as office space rental. I think that RioCan, this is a good time to cash out for me and the money is better off used in other growth stocks like these ones here. The other companies like Altagas, Fortis, Hydro One, ATS, Manulife, Canadian Apartment Rentals, and Grand Columbia Mining, these were all positions that came on parity with my cost basis of them, so I decided to sell out of them and shift that capital into growth stocks. And ultimately, I actually sold less than I bought, so a lot of these stocks that I sold off, the proceeds were used to buy into these positions here. Two positions that didn't fall into the category of dividend stocks was Canada Goose and Drone Delivery Canada. The reason why I sold Canada Goose, this is actually half my position, is because there seems to be a lot of bear sentiment towards it in the market right now, and the stock price is not really moving up. And I think also there's been a trend in the retail market where consumers are shifting away from Canada Goose to other retailers out there. So I sold at a cost basis of $40.70, which is roughly on par of my actual cost basis when I bought this stock. And I think that I'm comfortable with my position right now, sitting around $1,300 today. Um, I don't wanna allocate any more capital to Canada Goose. And I think that when my position was around $2,500, it was a bit much, which is why I sold out of half of it. I think that Canada Goose could take off a little bit here and there with this China expansion, but it is relatively risky in terms of its growth going forwards. 
And also for the retail sector, it's a little bit hard to understand in terms of where consumer is going to be in the next year or so. We know that brands come in and out, for example, Gap, Abercrombie & Finch, and Hollister. These were high-flying brands before, but today they don't really have a great following. And other brands like Aritzia are starting to gain traction, as well as companies in the states like Revolve. Now moving on to Drone Delivery Canada, the reason why I sold this position, well really half of it as well, is because the stock price shot up from around 70 cents to about a dollar per share and was slowly declining. The reason why the stock price surged was because of a bot deal offering as well as some news they announced with deals that they struck with um, certain businesses in Canada. So I think that this is a time for me to sell out of half my position because I felt like $800 allocated in this position was a little bit risky and I was not very comfortable holding that much Drone Delivery Canada stock. This is a very speculative position of mine and I think that this company could ultimately fail in the long run because they're ultimately running on other people's money. They continue to do capital raises after capital raises after capital raises and their share count has ballooned dramatically. Their business though is a very capital intensive business because they're ultimately a hardware business building drones. They do have a software unit but I think that the drone space is still relatively new and there are other players out there that have garnered more attention from investors and Drone Delivery Canada doesn't strike me as one. Um, I think the company has done itself a disservice by raising so much capital and the dilution of shareholders has really been a put off to a lot of investors. So for me, this $400 position in Drone Delivery Canada that I have right now is a very speculative play and ultimately if the company does go down in flames, I'm okay with losing that $400. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys in this video. If you enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you guys are new here. If you guys want to learn more about well health technologies, click on this video right here. Otherwise, if you want to learn more about my bullish thesis on Bitcoin, click on this video right here. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, Keep up the grind and have a great day.